So now moving on to the next video in this unit. So now we're on unit 3B, so our second section of this unit. And now we're going to be focusing on adding and subtracting linear expressions. And what we, why we had to go through like terms before is because when we add and subtract, we can only add and subtract our like terms. So in order for you to be able to combine like terms or add or subtract like terms, you needed to know what like terms were or what they are, right? So our objectives for today is students will be able to simplify expressions through multiplication and combining like terms. And then also students will be able to simplify linear expressions. So we're going to talk about specifically what a linear expression is later on. And then we're going to simplify just linear expressions. So from here, we're pretty much just going to be knowing how to simplify through multiplying and combining like terms. All right. So this video is mainly just going over some examples uh, with just one definition that's given to you. All right. So the, the directions for this is simply to say simplify. So when you're asked to simplify, sometimes you may have to multiply. Sometimes you may have to divide. Sometimes you may just have to add or subtract. So we're going to go through a couple examples to show you what you should be looking for. But in here, there's no multiplication that's happening. All of these are just are single terms. So what we need to do is see, can I combine these? And can I rewrite this? So I don't have to rewrite this as what appears to be six terms right now. So I'm looking to see, can I shorten this? Maybe if that's how you want to think about it. And what we do is we look to see is, do we have any like terms? So here I see I have an X as my variable, just an X. So I'm going to look around and see, do I have any just X's? Yes, here I do as well. So those are like terms. So I'm going to have to simplify and combine those. Now, I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to look and see, are there any other like terms? So here I have a constant four. Well, are there any other just constants? And yes, I have a constant of an eight. So now I'm going to look and see, okay, can I keep going? Here I have an X squared. Are there any other X squares? And yes, so those are like terms. So what I would suggest is use different colors, circle or square or triangle, your like terms. So this way it jumps out at you what you're going to be combining. And what I'm going to suggest in the beginning is to take your like terms and you're going to rewrite them so that they're next to each other. So I'm going to write 5X minus 2X because I'm going to write them next to each other. Then I have my plus 4, so plus 4, and I'm going to write my other like term plus 8 next to it. Then I had that minus 3x squared and a like term of minus 4x squared. So I'm writing them next to it so that this way I'm grouping all of my like terms together. Now, when we do this, the number out front, the coefficient, is telling us how many we have of that variable. So when we're combining our like terms, we are just simply adding or subtracting the numbers out front. So I can think of this as 5 minus 2 times x plus, well, 4 plus 8, those are just two constants, so I can go ahead and add them together now. So plus 12, and then here I have plus, and then I have minus three, minus four as my coefficients, and x squared. When I'm looking at the numbers out front like this, if I'm gonna write it like this, I'm gonna write a plus there every time, and then I'll change it to a negative if it ends up being a negative, right? So then I'm gonna add my numbers out front. Well, five minus two is three, so this is three times x. That 12 is just our 12, so now it's plus 12. And here we have negative three minus four, which is negative seven. So we would never write plus minus 7x squared. So this is just rewritten as a minus 7x squared. So you see we combined all of our like terms by adding the coefficients or subtracting the coefficients. And then when you're writing this, you do need to write this in a very specific order. And if we have just one variable, so in this case we have x's just as our x's, we write the, our expression from our greatest exponent to our least. So we would actually write this as negative 7x squared plus 3x plus 12 if we want to write this uh, the proper way. But if you just stop and give me your answer like this, for now you would be considered correct. Uh, but in the future, this is how you would be expecting to write it, where we pick a variable. In this case, we only have one x and we write it with our powers going in descending order. So our greatest power to our least greatest power. All right. And now you might think based on the last video, you might think that this had a six terms, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you might say, hey, this has six terms, but we don't actually say how many terms we have until we get to the end and we combined and simplified everything that we can. So although it may appear that it had six terms, this really only has three separate terms. All right. And remember, our terms are separated by our plus or our minus signs. So we have three X as a term, 12 as a term and negative um, seven X squared as a term as well. All right, so the next example we're going to do is, once again, it just says simplify. So we need to see what can we do. So you see, when we had the 6 and then we had the parentheses written next to this, 
This is meaning that it's being multiplied. So since we can actually multiply, we would have to do what's called distribute this in. So remember, everything in the parentheses needs to be multiplied by the six. So the first thing we would do is we would have to distribute this. And since multiplication comes before addition or subtraction, we can't do 4x plus 3x because this is needing to be multiplied first. So we'll first distribute this in. And when we multiply, we are multiplying our numbers. So when we have a coefficient and we're being asked to multiply by a six, we simply just do six times three. So six times three gives me 18. So this is actually 18 X. And then when we distribute into the negative two, six times negative two is minus 12. And then we're left with the plus four X minus five. Let's identify our like terms. So we have our 18 X and our four X. Then we have our negative 12 and our negative five because they're constants. So we'll go ahead and rewrite these next to each other. So 18 X plus four X, and then we have minus 12 minus five. Well, when we're combining like terms with our variables, we add the numbers or the coefficients out front. And 18 plus four gives me 22, so that's 22 X. And negative 12 minus five, we know is going to be negative 17. Since the signs are the same, we can go ahead and add them. So that gives me 17. And since they're both negative, my answer will be negative, right? And that will be our final answer for this one. So when you're asked to simplify, we multiply, if we can, we have to divide if we can, uh, but we do all the computation that we can. And then at the end, we're combining all of our like terms. Uh, so this way we can write it with um, the least amount of terms that we possibly can. All right, so now the last part of this video is going to be talking about linear expressions. So first off, what is a linear expression? And a linear expression is an algebraic expression in which the exponents, so all of the exponents that we're dealing with, uh, have an, a, an exponent of one. Right? So in this case, a linear expression, negative 4x, that would be 1, uh, because we have a power of 1. When there's, just like with our coefficients, if there's no power written, it's understood to be a 1. This would be a linear expression because our power is 1, and so would this one here because our power is 1. These are not linear expressions because we have a square, we have a cube, and we have a power of 5. And another one as well that's not written here, if we put 1 over x, this is also not a linear expression uh, because you don't know this yet, but you'll learn this in the future that this is actually equal to x raised to the negative first power. So it's not a positive one that we have there. All right. So um, a linear expression, our variables being raised to the first power, nonlinear expressions, they're not being raised to the first power. All right. So in this one, a direction, say, add the linear expressions. So we are separating two expressions with those parentheses to show you that this is one linear expression that you're looking to add, and this is a second. Right? And when you're asked to add them, you can do this two different ways. The first way you can do this is just rewrite this without the plus sign in between, because when we are just adding them and there's no other number written in front of it, there's nothing we need to multiply or do anything. So we can just look at it as X minus two plus three X plus eight, which is exactly what we just did in those problems before. And we can go ahead and combine our like terms and we can highlight them. So I can look here and say, okay, well, my like terms of X plus three X and then I have my other like terms of minus two plus eight. So my X plus three X, I'm adding my coefficients that are out front. So one plus three gives me four X. And then negative two plus eight is going to give me plus six. And that is our answer, right? That is one way you can do it. And another way, it's up to you which one you want to do, is you can actually stack them. And when you stack them, you just have to make sure that you put all of your like terms above and below each other like we would if we were adding or subtracting decimals, right? And by doing this, we can just go ahead and add down. Negative 2 plus 8 is going to give me 6, so positive 6. And x plus 3x, so we're adding our coefficients, so 1 plus 3 gives me 4, so it is 4x. All right? You can do this if you want. It's really up to you. The only thing is, if you're going to do this and you have and you're missing some like terms, uh, you would then have to leave a space for or put a 0 as a placeholder so you know that you're adding 0 to it. All right? But you can do it horizontally like we've been doing, or you can do it vertically. All right? There's one more example we're going to do, and then that's it for this video. All right, now there are different ways you can actually go about solving this. I'm going to do what I think is arguably the easiest, but you can decide which method you want to choose and how you want to do it. But when you're asked to subtract linear expressions like this, what I'm going to suggest for you to do is rewrite this as an addition problem. And what you would do first is you will take this minus sign, because this is where kids always forget to do, is you're first going to distribute this minus sign in, because remember, when we have a number in front of our parentheses, five, and we, we had two X minus three, this is saying to multiply. So we know to distribute. Well, 
we know that in front of a, co a variable, the coefficient, if it's not written, written, it's understood to be a one. If I were to write negative times two X minus three, this is understood to be a negative one times two X minus three. So we're gonna distribute this negative one in and rewrite it as a plus or an addition uh, problem. So we have five X plus six, and I'm gonna rewrite it as a plus, so I'm gonna put plus. And then after I distribute this in, a negative one times positive two X is negative two X. And negative one times negative three is positive three, right? I just think it might be easier for you to think about these as addition problems instead of negative. And then this way we don't forget to distribute that negative into everything. We're just gonna do it first. And then we're going to go ahead and add uh, whichever method you want. We can do it horizontally. So five X plus six um, minus two X plus three. So we can go ahead and uh, combine our like terms. So we're gonna identify them first or so constants in our variable X. And then we're gonna go ahead and rewrite them next to each other. So five X minus two X plus six plus three. And then we'll add the coefficients out front. So five minus two X and then plus six plus three. Well, five minus two is gonna give me three X and six plus three is going to give me nine. So it will give me a three X plus nine. After we then rewrote, rewrote them as an addition problem, we can go ahead and stack them if we want to as well. So minus two X plus three. And now we can go ahead and say, well, six plus three gives me nine, so positive nine, and five minus two gives me three, so three X. All right, the one thing I think might happen if you're doing this horizontal is that you might forget to write that positive sign there, and you might write three X nine, which would then be considered wrong because you're not telling me what to do. So make sure that you are putting, if it's positive, the plus, so we know that we're adding them together. All right, that is it for this video.